You are listening to the Hiking Radio Network, where we talk the walk with shows by hikers about hikers for everybody. This is the Hammock Hangers Podcast, where we hang out and talk about everything from hammocks and hammock camping to the group hangs from around the country. Hey, all y'all hammock enthusiasts and chill seekers. Welcome to the Hammock Hangers Podcast, the coziest spot on the pod waves. We are your go-to source for all things hammock related. From laid back tales to tips and tricks on finding that perfect hang. So grab yourself a drink, kick back in your favorite hammock, and let's swing into some awesome discussion. This is where relaxation meets conversation, and it's going to be one comfy ride. So let's get into it. All right, everyone. Well, today we are back with a, uh, I mean, mediocre guest at best. Uh, I mean, maybe decent on a on a good day De- definitely not a great guest uh we have our very own water boy or our famous matt hammond on the podcast today welcome matt it's great to be here but just remember you get what you pay for that's true that's true and you know if he does really good we may even give him a 20 percent raise of what i'm paying you right now Woohoo! <laughs> so matt um i I brought you on the podcast today because you've done, um, well, we, we really started this whole hammock camping journey together, um, especially backpacking. Uh, I remember our very first trip when I said, hey, um, do you want to go backpacking and not have me die alone in the woods? Can I like bring someone with me <laughs> uh, to that very first trip that we went out to uh, Hidden Pond? Neither one of us had any gear. Uh, and we bought these backpacks that, you know, looking back on it now, like, well, we didn't die, but we probably were carrying a few pounds, maybe a lot of pounds more than we should have. I, I remember looking like, I don't know what we're going to eat. I went to different shops looking for MREs. I was like, I don't know how much water to bring, you know, trying to, all the hammock stuff was borrowed from you. Awful backpack. It was is that the one that we, I, I, we have so many adventures together, but is that the, the reason that we can't go back to that uh, military supply surplus store? Was that, that, the trip? Is, that, that is correct. Okay. <laughs> so in, in our, in our complete ignorance on backpacking, uh, we had called uh, this military surplus store. It's like, Hey, can we get some MREs? They're like, Oh, we'll, we'll save them for you. Da, 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 da. Um, yeah, we never get, we never went and picked up those MREs. That's because a friend gave me an entire case and I, tested, oh, that's them. True. I tested them out the night before and they said, Oh, if the little spot on the box turns black, they're no good. I'm like, they're going to be good. They're going to be fine. And the, the night before we went, I opened them all up and started trying things and they were all rotten. They were they all, were, oh, yes, I do remember that. And then we just made a trip to Walmart. We're like, oh, here's Mountain yeah. House. So this is what hikers eat, I guess. And we didn't die. We did not die. We did not die. So, uh, but from then, uh, we've, you know, ventured into Hancon and we've done a few other uh, car camping and we, we've hiked a little bit um, still, but you've actually done a type of uh, camping that um i i am not familiar with and I, i'm curious about I, i'm definitely a lot more curious now than i probably ever was um but you, you've done a lot of kayak camping uh with the the scouts um just so uh for our viewers uh matt's son uh christopher just received his uh, eagle rank in the boy scouts woot woot uh and uh, so you guys have been doing scouts for a long, long time. Uh, I, our sons were in scouts together, uh, before he went the whole band route and yeah. And you, you guys got into a troop that actually did camping and ours just started canceling when a squirrel farted and I was like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> 
but you you guys really that kind of embraced hammock camping just as a troop correct yes uh most of the boys in the in the troop have hammocks now and they use them uh, some of the boys use them exclusively some of them use it kind of 50 50 sometimes they're 10 sometimes they're uh a lot of them don't have some really they don't have high-end nice gear but they're starting to invest and get into stuff and a lot of the leaders are also have have hammocks now okay so what what was that transition like for scouts because i know hammocks are increasingly growing in popularity and you know i know we really support hammock camping as a a venue for scouts and i think it's a really great opportunity to practice you know the the, the buddy role and but also keeping your separate spaces uh, and I, I look back on my time in scouts and think, man, some of these very miserable camping trips that I went on would have been so much better in a hammock. Actually, any even the good ones would have been better in a hammock. What what started that transition for your troop to go primarily, um, you know, tents to really adopting the hammock uh, ecosystem, for lack of a better term? finding a, an acceptable hammock that is reasonably priced that was that was the big thing trying to find something where these boys and their parents could invest in that wasn't crazy expensive but they're going to be able to be comfortable you know a real camping hammock for a decent price that was the hardest part and then of course insulation for winter camping because even though it's florida it gets cold here and and so those were the two big things trying to find hammocks that are going to be decent for the price that the kids can afford and then in the winter time handling insulation just price 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 yeah i i can definitely see that topic coming up a lot in hammock forums and on facebook groups where you have someone that is just getting into hammock camping and that they, they, they don't know what they don't know uh it's kind of a big uh big environment where you have lots of different uh, types of information, some of it good. And if you're not really familiar with uh, comfort rating versus survival rating and a lot of the other terms with hammocks, it can be really, really confusing. Um, what, what was kind of like the, what, what was kind of the, the price point that you were looking at for the kids to really get into hammock camping? For the hammock itself, like the 50 to $70 range, trying to find something in that in that range because anytime you say oh here's a hammock it's over a hundred dollars the scout parents were out like it was like a hundred dollars for him like what what right uh so that that 50 to 70 dollars 50 to 75 dollar range was kind of that sweet spot that we were looking for hammocks okay what's going to be an 11 foot hammock with a zippered bug net that has a that has a ridge line that comes with the straps and that I can be for under a hundred dollars, you know, and there's not a ton of options because I can get, can I just order something on Amazon? Like there's very few things you can just order on Amazon and feel comfortable sleeping overnight and camping. Right. So what, what were some of the brands and stuff that you guys uh, found that really accommodated the, that new hanger? At, uh, in the beginning, it was the Ridge Outdoor Gear. And so I first saw this from a Spagiver video ordered some to use and they were really great for the price amazing then meeting them at hangcon they were great people and they actually donated uh some hammocks to my scout group that i'm the caretaker of that i lend out to scouts and to leaders awesome awesome so um out so what was the kind of breakdown of when you said i've got a hammock that I'm really enjoying this hammock camping and I'm, I'm really liking, I really want to invest in that. What was kind of that point that they realized, Hey, I want, I want better gear. Yeah. Once, once they actually got into a hammock and tried out a hammock and they realized, wow, this is so much better than being in a tent. And, you know, and they enjoy our, our group is big into knots and not tying. We have a, a red rope challenge that we do where the boys have, they instead of just learning the knot for the sign off, they get it signed off and then they never use it again. We have a uh, Mr. Tony, shout out to Mr. Tony, uh, brought their red rope challenge to our group, which now the boys uh, 
practice the knots all the time. They can level up from a white to a blue to a, to a red rope. And so they're practicing knots all the time. And they're always looking for reasons to use their knots now. And that was a, that was a big thing. Um, and uh, just the portability and how modular things can be. Oh, I'm going to get a new, you know, getting a new rain fly can be easier than just buying a whole new setup and be able to swap things out. Um, now our latest boys, they've been buying some of the one wind stuff uh, to to help them. They go, oh, we got some buckles that slide. That's a lot. I like that better than the daisy chain hooks and things like that. Awesome. So, do you think the um, the the knot tying has really um, transitioned well into hammock camping? And do you think the hammock camping has really helped to solidify some of those knots for your scouts? Absolutely. Yeah, um, I, I remember when we first got into scouts and Christopher, now he's a senior in high school, so uh, he's been doing it for a long time. You know, I remember when when, when we would have that, that sign-off time, I would have to go and look up how to reach out, how to tie the knot. And I would go, I'd go yeah, go, go practice that uh, two half hitches. Go practice that for a while. And I'd have to go look it up on YouTube learn it relearn it and then go work that and now that we have so many of our boys in our troop that are proficient in all of their basic knots so much so much easier and then using you know different lashings and uh, building things pioneer things getting bamboo rods and doing lashings they really enjoy stuff like that but it's a it's been it's been a it's been a great addition being able to you know a rope breaks being at the end of your um rain fly tears out and then you need to attach that to the tree and be able to use a you know a sheet bend you know it's 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 been a it's been a game changer well that's really great that you're able to uh, uh, uh provide those opportunities for those knots because i again i did a lot of knots in scouts too but you use them once and you're like wow well, when am i going to use that again I, I will definitely say once I started hammock camping, I use knots on a regular basis. And yeah, I understand for, for some people, knots are very intimidating and there are some hardware that you can buy to kind of minimize some of that. But some sometimes just a knot is just the easiest and the lightest. And some of these knots that we use in hammock camping are really not difficult at all, especially when you're talking about you know, Marlin Spike Hitch, um, which is one that I actually don't use a lot, but I use a Beckett Hitch as my primary um, suspension system. Just, it, it's cr really easy. It's really easy to slip undone and, um, uh, what's what's the it's a, almost a self undoing knot like you just pull there there's a term for that what help me out here it's a, a slippery slippery hitch yeah you just pull and boom it's done you're not having to like pick and pull and tug kind of like a a, a knot in your shoelaces uh, if you do them right you can just pull and done and you can have them tied in less than a second. And the more that you use them, the more efficient that you're going to get them. And yeah, yeah, are you going to maybe mess up a little bit? But it's not something that, you know, you know, knock on wood. I'll say that it's not going to kill you. Uh, you know, if it slips, it might be a little bit hurtful to your pride. But uh, you're not going to die. Knock on wood. So I never hang higher than you plan on falling. Right. Yeah, I mean those those crazy people that hang over like the gorges and things like that. Yeah, it's like you were you were just mm, precious. <laughs> no, thank you to that. Bless your hearts. <laughs> now, another thing that you guys have taken hammock camping to just a kind of new venture is you guys do a lot of kayak camping. Yeah, um, so, our, so tell me about that. Yeah, our troop owns a whole set of. Uh, canoes and then a lot of the boys have their own kayaks and our group they don't like to do the a lot of the safe council get it they like to go out in the middle of nowhere 
and we have a, a connection with people who own a, a private deserted island in the middle of um, uh, in the middle of the water, and we paddle out there at least twice a year um, for camping. And it's it's a great place. There's old ruins on the island, and and it, it's just an amazing place. It's just oyster bar shell island. And it's a whole collection, and we have full reign of those when we go. And the only way to get there is canoe and kayak. So my first time that Christopher and I went out there, we we did our a lot of the boys were in canoes. We did the kayaks, and yeah, planning for a a, a kayak trip was was definitely a lot different than than for a, a hiking trip or things like that. So how how, how would you say that those are different? Well, my biggest concern was, you know, keeping my insulation dry. That was the the biggest thing is like, oh, I, you know, got some new dry bags. You know, I just, I just envision, you know, flipping the kayak, all of my gear gets wet, you know, now I'm on this island for, for the weekend. And that was, that was the big thing is keeping, keeping, everything just in case and just with water splashing if it's if the boys flip over a, a, a canoe um keeping that because it was it was cold enough that we had to have insulation on the island if you were going to be in a hammock but you know and i the thought of wet down gives me nightmares <laughs> yeah especially considering we know how much we've spent on our quilts and things like that and you don't exactly have a dryer out on the island that you can kind of throw wet stuff into so do you think um like a synthetic insulation would be um you know preferable for kayak camping or you just think hey invest in some good dry bags and you're really not having to worry i i only have one synthetic under quilt and i never you actually i i it's on loan to to one of the scout leaders um so i you know down and trust in the dry bag (laughs) <laughs> um so as far as your packing and things like that i know when we're camping we try to do as light as we can and as small as we can um what are, other than you know making sure that things stay dry um what other considerations do you take when you are planning a um canoe or kayak trip well uh this is just for there but like there's there's it's a it's an island in the middle of in the middle of the gulf so the uh a shovel and toilet paper because the only bathroom you have is the one that you dig that was but that's not exclusively for the for that but yeah um a lot of this stuff is i mean it's it's really about you know just getting there so once you're on the island it's kind of just like a regular camping trip it's just my big thing was keeping stuff dry on the way there and then just you know trying to just packing things in a different way because i'm used to having everything in the backpack and so now it's a it's dry bags or some boys bring totes and uh totes and dry bags just kind of finding a new way to pack your the things that you're going to have on the island so are you having to worry as much about weight or is it just more um compressibility because i'm sure at some point especially if like you're, you're in a kayak you don't have limitless um space options yeah especially uh, the kayaks that my son and I have, they're, they're pretty short kayaks. There's not a lot of storage room in the kayaks that we have. So having a whole, you know, a whole troop of people paddling, we were able to put some of our stuff in the big canoes. So we didn't have to worry about really uh, as, as much, we didn't have to worry about weight at all in space. If it was, if it was just in our, just in our kayaks, um, would have had to be more careful about what we packed but having the canoes actually did make that a lot of a lot easier if you didn't have the canoes would you say you're still looking at a similar size and scope to your traditional backpacking load yes yes a lot and a lot of the same stuff the the you know the the water filter and the camp cooking gear and a lot of that kind of stuff uh, super minimal is what we do when, on most uh, any kind. Of, we're, if we're backpacking or canoing, it's it's as minimal a setup as possible usually. 
So which do you prefer? Would you rather backpack or would you rather kayak? Backpack mostly just because of the fear of tipping over and things getting wet. Or, I mean, Lord forbid you tip over and your dry bag does its job, but you lose it down the river or <laughs> floats away. <laughs> Thank you for that new fear. <laughs> appreciate that oh my goodness so um going back to camping um with scouts um you know your son has really kind of uh been along this hammock camping uh journey with you um do you think hammock camping has kind of uh reinvigorated his love for camping and maybe helped him stick the course to um eagle or aided in that yeah, he's completely a hammock guy. Um, he never, I, I, I don't know if he remembers the last time that he was in, it was probably the last time that he was in a a, a, a ground tent, probably would have, would have been in Cub Scouts because he's been in hammocks for so long that it's, it's been a, it's been a really long time since he, since he was that. So he's, he's a hundred percent a hammock guy and the, Camping is one of the things in scouts because there are a lot of the things in scouts that they have to do sign offs and things like that. And some of the merit badges, it's a little bit like schoolwork. So having that camp out every, cause our group camps very regularly every month we have a camp out, we have a big summer camp and then some of the boys do the winter camp. Um, so there's a, a lot of camping uh, with our group and, and that's the, what gets a lot of the boys through it's like, yeah, I have to do the, citizenship in the world and citizenship in the nation do all these merit uh eagle required merit badges that some of them are a lot a blast and some of them aren't fun and no, some of them are some of them are horrible yeah. <laughs> i i remember some specifically just being like sweet fancy moses just get me through this yeah and so it's you know that that's the outdoor adventure stuff that really keeps a lot of the boys going and you know learning about hammocks and, and a new way to camp is, you know, it's something new and exciting for a lot of these. They didn't even know it was an option when they join our troop. You know, they, a lot of them call me instead of Mr. Hammond, they call me Mr. Hammock and they, uh, they don't know my other name is water boy. Um, but you know, they, they get super excited about they're like, Oh, there's, you can, you can camp in a hammock. I didn't even know that was an option. Yeah, I think it's um, I, I love the fact that you go out and you see a lot more hammocks on, let's say, the AT or um, I, I was just back out of Hidden Pond um, this past week. Um, and for our listeners, we did start a, a, a video series. I don't know how annual or regularly it's going to be, depending on how often that I'm able to get out in, in camp. Uh, but uh, where I vlogged my trip out to Hidden Pond, which is the same place that we hiked out to our first time. However, I took a very different trail than the first time we we took out. But um, yeah, still not sure why our first trip couldn't be like the woods behind my house or like at a state park. That our very first one had to be uh, a long hike in the middle of nowhere. It definitely made it more exciting. Yeah, and meeting strangers on the internet that none of us ever knew. But on the flip side, we're still friends with, you know, at, at least two of them, uh, you know, close to 10 years later. So, I mean, they they may be happy about that or they may not be happy about that. <laughs> so when, when you guys, um, you guys said that you do a lot of camping and camp regularly, do you continue to use the hammocks even when you go to some of the, the, the national camperees or jamborees as well? I'm, I'm really the only one in the troop that actually takes it to summer camp with us because I, I will either, I have, I bring my tents to stand or if there's no trees. So I, I never sleep on the benches, even the scout leaders who have hammocks, which most of them do. Uh, they still sleep in the in the horrible scout cots in the, oh like the a frame military oh, yes. oh my goodness that the leaks things that and don't the bugs breathe just at walk all. right in they still they still do that I'm the one who actually 
brings a, a hammock stand and a hammock and and sets it up. Most of the summer camps I've been able to find trees near our area, and um, but last last summer down at uh, TK down in South Florida, I I brought the tensus stand and I set it up and and I I slept in the in the in my hammock in the tensus stand and it was it was amazing. So do you think you maybe encouraged other scout leaders to say, Hey, maybe I'll drop a little coin on a stand either from, you know, Tensa, like your Tensa four or, you know, Yobo or, you know, I've had those lines. none of them have been, have thought about or made the financial investment in a stand yet, but I have had scout leaders build DIY stands. Okay. And what what type of stand do they end up building? Do they build a Tensa or did they build like a turtle dog or turtle dog? Yeah. Okay. One family, it was a family and then uh, his scouts and then the scouts ended up become, becoming leaders for a while. Um, they made, they made those and they, they use them. They keep them in a, in their little trailer that they would use to transport bikes and other gear like that. And they would set them up quite often. Have there ever been a scout trip that you've gone on that you did not have your stand that you couldn't hang? <laughs> Thank goodness, not yet. <laughs> that has not happened yet. Because um, usually, uh, we most of the places we go, the only place where it's a question mark where you know, am I gonna are there gonna be trees is usually summer camp, and um, we won't be going to summer camp now that uh, Chris, Christopher is aged out and has, he's an eagle and he's a, he's a he's an assistant scoutmaster now. We won't be going to summer camp. They're going to Daniel Boone this year. Um, we won't be going along. So summer camp's over for for us, but the, we still go on the regular campouts and and. So when you would go free. to like the summer camps or some of the bigger um, Boy Scout jamborees and camperees. How did the hammock uh, scene look as far as the the bigger scouting organization? At those places that that we've been, um, uh, Comer, Durant, TK, Rainy Mountain, though pretty much all of the boys sleep in uh, the the cot uh, structures. Um, but we were at one of the places we were, they did have an area set up for hammocks. They actually had a, a center pole and a circle of um, poles around it for, for setting up hammocks. Um, but no one was using those at the time. So I haven't seen very much mm. at the big ones. Right. Oh, hopefully they're using them at, uh, at their smaller locations. But at, at summer camp, most of the kids, they, have, they get one tote and they, they sleep on the cots. It's, it seems pretty miserable to me. <laughs> I, I'm just thinking, so the the scout camp that I went to uh, growing up and worked at uh, for one summer, uh, Camp Powhatan and Camp Atari uh, in uh, southwest Virginia it was it, at the time, and I don't know if it still is, but it was the second largest uh, scout reservation outside of Philmont. And I thinking back just how many trees and how, how awesome that would be um, to, to incorporate hammock uh, camping uh, in with that, that surrounding because being in the mountains, I can imagine, you know, I, I've never been out there, but I can looking back at pictures, I can imagine that tr the tree situation in Philmont may be a little tricky, but in Southwest Virginia, uh, I mean, you got the Appalachian mountains right there. There, there's trees galore. So I, I want to say like my first um, introduction to hammock camping being a very viable option as far as like a group organization. Uh, in college, we I worked at a, uh, a Methodist camp uh, in Tennessee and they had two areas of the camp. They had the, uh, the upper camp and the lower camp. And the upper camp was more like your high adventure, you know, your ropes course and, you know, your your serious uh, high, high adventure. And one of the options that they had for campers, uh, they had a, a, a hammock camp where they had uh, tree houses that they had built, which were more like elevated structures, pretty much, that they had hammocks in. But hammock camp was one of the option and they were just you know cheap 
uh, nine foot hammocks, but it, it was still something very new, very, um, very innovative and just something that no one else was ever doing. And I don't even know if they had like under quilts or what, because I was part of the lower camp staff. But looking back and how cool that would be, unfortunately, that camp, you know, is no longer there. But I don't know if they transitioned that treehouse slash hammock camp to the new location that they went to. That was Camp uh, Buffalo Mountain, which uh, uh, they had they had a flash flood that came through there that did a, a lot of serious damage to the camp. And they end up moving it to uh, Base Mountain, uh, which is not too far away uh, from where they were at. But. But yeah, so another type of uh, camping that you do and you've kind of really been into is you've actually created and built some like mini campers or uh, refer to like teardrops. So, so talk to us a little about th that experience. Oh, yeah. The, our, our first camper build, it was a fiberglass shell, uh, very small, like the uh, five by ten uh footprint um and we i built a platform bed a low very low platform bed and some shelving and we i hooked up an air conditioning system to it and we used that for a while and the, our, the, the boys we just kind of outgrew it we couldn't all four fit in there anymore so we ended up buying a 7 by 12 cargo trailer and doing a cargo trailer conversion and that was a that was a really fun uh project so we we, we went and we bought the, the brand new cargo trailer. We put in a flooring, insulated the ceiling, painted the walls, um, got a lot of uh, supplies from Ikea. Our kitchen cabinets came from Ikea. Um, we had a, a two full-size beds, uh, like a bunk bed kind of situation. Um, the air conditioning unit, uh, the electrical shelving all those kind of things and then uh, we've actually displayed both of those at the florida tiny house festival that was a, a lot of fun to kind of take that but um my wife is has not slept in a hammock yet um she's laid in a hammock but she's never actually camped in a hammock so when she camps you know she camps in the in the, in the camper and if, as long as the, you know the, the 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 weather's nice i'll i'll try to bring always bring my hammock and i'll sometimes i'll i always have it up outside of the camper but sometimes i'll i'll actually sleep in that depending on the on the weather but you know it's really hot out and the air conditioner is blowing in the camper it's kind of it's very tempting to to get lured inside yeah yeah so when we do our big trips um i always bring my stand because uh, like yourself i i I will never not have trees, uh, even if I have to bring my own. Um, but dr specifically, like driving through Amarillo, Texas, and it's just this this barren, dry wasteland, especially when we're driving through, and it's so hot, and it's so windy, and the dust is just coming everywhere. And we have the pop-up that has the AC. It's like, mm, you know... I'll, I'll suck it up for a night and just yeah. hop in there. Now, when, when you're thinking about like, as far as building your trailer conversions, do you ever think of a way that maybe hammocks could be incorporated either inside the trailer? Uh, I don't think my wife would let me do that. But... I mean, maybe, maybe not necessarily with your wife, but do you think, you know, hammocks could be a potential, uh, bedding option that could be easily put away um, that that could save space for something else. Because I can imagine a, a, a mattress is going to take up a significant piece of real estate. Oh, yeah. It, yeah. But it, that's where when we were originally looking at those, I was looking at the uh, 12 by 6. And then as soon as I laid down the way the bed was going to lay, it's like, oh, no, it's it's that's not going to be when well, you got to go to 12 by seven and it's got the V front. So it's actually 14 foot. Um, if you count the, if you count the V front, cause the seven by 12 doesn't count that. Um, but I, I'd love to have something, some kind of like a attachment, like a hitch attachment to the back to be able to have a hammock outside attached to the, to the back of the camper, I think would be, would be 
really nice to do. Do you think, um, I, well, when you go camping, do you just uh, assume that there is going to be trees or do you take your stand when you're camping with your teardrop or conversion? Now I always bring it. I very rarely ever use my tensa stand, uh, but I always have it <laughs> just, in, just in case. Just in I, case. Yeah. Yeah, my, my Yobo Cricket stand and, well, here as of recently, my Yobo Hive um, essentially lives in my in my truck. Just because, you know, you, you never know. You, know. you never know when you may or may not need it. I, I mean, I can imagine, well, I can't imagine I can actually attest to have being somewhere and go like, oh, I don't have to just look and try to find a spot. Like when we go to dance competitions, I'll bring out the stand and you know, like, oh, I'm going to set this up in a hotel lobby because I'm not sitting on these nasty couches that there's hardly any room anywhere. But there's a nice piece of open floor over there that I can lay in a hammock. Oh, me, 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 me. So um, I, I I just came back from our, our very first um, spot of Hidden Pond and I hiked um, – so Pat's Island down uh, to Hidden Pond. Have have we done that one together? I was thinking that we had, we we have done. I was maybe you have done that trail together, that section. Yeah, we, I know we've done it. At, we've gone to Hidden Pond at least two different ways, but I'm so bad with directions. That's true. That'd be a question for you. And Paul thinks I am bad with the directions. He doesn't comprehend. Just, oh. Yeah, I I want to say that's the that's the route that me, you, and um, Captain Carry on, which is how he got his name. Uh, I think that's the the version that we we camped. Yes, because when we hiked, we we started at the trailhead, and um, because I am so good with directions, we started hiking north uh, for probably good three quarters of a mile, and then realized, oh, we're hiking the wrong way. We were we were so trusting, and we just had so much faith in our leader. Yeah, yeah. And and then mistake we, number one. Totally thought you were joking when you started to turn around and start walking the opposite direction. I was like, he's joking, right? Right, Travis. He's joking. This is not. Yeah, because I remember running into so many like orb weaver spider webs and going, "Gosh, I thought there would be more." I thought more people would be coming to the pond more. There were more cars. And then when I looked at my GPS and looked at how our little mod was going, I was like, Oh, we're going North. We need to be going South. Eh, it was only a mile and a half deep tour. We got to see a mile and a half of the Florida trail that we would not have seen otherwise. You probably could have done some sort of turnaround loop and confused us, and that we would have even noticed. Probably, more than likely, more than likely. But uh, <laughs> so, so tell us about um, some some of the other camping uh, ventures that you've been on. What what has probably been one of your uh, favorite times that you've been out camping? I really do like the the times we've gone up to South Carolina. It's always great to visit the Pamano Steak Hangers. They those this uh, spring spring spring, swing. Fall, spring and then the fall sprawl uh, have always been been some of my favorites. Love to go up there and visit friends up there. Those have been awesome. Um, I really like um, I really like our our before Hancon planning camp outs when it's, it's, you know, it's our, the core group is there and, and yeah, there's some work to do and they're, y'all are planning menus and we're planning classes and things like that. But, you know, those are some of my favorites because we get to sit down, you know, we're at, we're at where Hancon's going to be, but it's before the crowd it's before all that kind the of stuff. Insanity. <laughs> before the insanity. And, you know, people are coming up with ideas and, you know, like, oh, who's going to teach this class? And, you know, I, I really do. I really do enjoy those plan, those planning camp outs, which, you know, I tell my wife, it's, like, oh, it's, it's work. We got to it's, it's so much work. planning. It's like, oh, it's going to be whatever. And then you show up and there's there's fajitas and 
it's all good to go. You, you never know, like, what type of groups that are going to be at uh, Florida Sands when you come just randomly. Um, I know this past year, uh, <laughs> and if I'm looking at the calendar correctly, I think it will also be this year coming I up hope so. as well. I, I think it's the same weekend. Um, we had some um, just just very colorful uh, individuals, both literally and figuratively there. Um so Florida Music um, uh, Camp, uh, or Florida Sands Music Camp, has a lot of really great festivals there uh, that accommodate a very, very wide um, demographic of individuals. And um, yeah, it, it's always it's always good to be around some different people, even if your drum circle repeats the same repetitive beat till maybe 2 3 a.m and yeah it's fine everything's fine no no it's, it's always it's always good so you grew up in pennsylvania and you know you go back uh you know occasionally do you ever do any camping um back when you're up in pa yeah that um surprisingly no that that's one thing where i didn't I, i've done so much more camping in florida than i ha did in pennsylvania growing up in pennsylvania you know, our, our family, we did a lot of hunting, but not a lot of camping and we didn't fish and we, we didn't camp very much. Um, so really I didn't start camping until I met my, my met my wife in, in college and we started going on camping trips. Uh, my, even my, the Cub Scout group that I was in, involved with, we did very little camping. We were in the middle of a big city and we met in the basement of a church and there was very little camping. That's probably a reason that I I loved Cub Scouts. Then once we got to Boy Scouts and there wasn't, there, I think if my group would have camped more when I was a kid, I would have stayed with Boy Scouts longer one year of, of, of Boy Scouts. And I was done. Cause you know, I was done meeting in the basement of a, of a church. Uh, it was, it just, it was just, wasn't exciting. And then, so it really wasn't until college and meeting my wife that we started going on camp outs and then moving to Florida and getting you know getting back involved in scouts when my when my older son uh, got to second grade and i was like kind of re rediscovered camping and and how much fun it was even though i didn't i didn't know there, i didn't know there were alternatives to tents at that time um but that was a lot but yeah i've done very little camping back in pennsylvania i've camped a thousand times more in florida than i have in pennsylvania I, I would say what you said about uh, the camping frequency and your kind of retention into the, the scouting program is kind of, they coincide with each other. I, I would say that my scout troop growing up, both Cub Scouts and Boy Scouts were very, hey, we're going to do the, the, the jamborees. We're going to do uh, the, the camp outs. Now my troop never really did any hiking, uh, we did a lot of like car camping, but we, we were still out pretty, pretty consistently um, at, at, at the very least five times a year, plus a week at summer camp. Now we always went to the same summer camp. Um, we always went to, to Powhatan. Um, <clears throat> but I would definitely say that my son's, um, kind of lackluster experience with scouts uh, kind of came at the cost of, you know, not, not going out and not camping and not being out in um, kind of the, the, the wilderness, you know, per se um, and offering those type of experiences. So if, if you're a Cub Scout leader and, or a Boy Scout leader or a Girl Scout leader um, and you want to, and, and you're wondering maybe why your kid's retention into your program isn't going uh, the way that you think it was, um, maybe add some more camping into it. There, there's just something about, uh, you know, being out in the woods, especially for, I think, kids nowadays. And I, and I know I'm kind of sounding like a, an old grumpy adult right now, but when we have kids that are that are so attached to screens and so void of, really taking in experiences 
that that are real in front of them, not just through a screen, not just in a movie or a TV show or a YouTube video. Uh, really taking that in personally, uh, it, it can have a, a lasting effect. Um, but both, and I think overall it, it's positive. You know, I think looking back at some of the trips that I remember from Scouts are some of the some of the the good ones but you you know you also remember some of the bad ones but in a way of hey i remember why this was bad so i'm not going to do that again and that that was one of the frustrating things with the the cub scout troop that we were a part of it got to the point where you know the leaders were you know if there was even a slight chance of rain uh nope we're canceling it or if the weather and this is going to be a big chuckle for you know people you know not in florida but oh if the temperature was going to drop below 50 degrees they're like oh no it's too cold well like why you're 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 robbing these kids of experiences that they could grow is it going to be a fantastic trip that everybody is going to go smooth no it's going to be slightly bumpy but if every trip was oh smooth and hunky dory, you, you wouldn't ever ever learn anything. Yeah, we we do our thorns and roses after every uh, after every camp out, and the, the boys talk about what was your rose, what was the what you love about the camp out, what was your thorn, what didn't you like, and what would you choose, what would you do different next time? And the boys all learn, you know, if, if they got wet because they didn't put their their tent up right. They learn from that, and they'll they'll be like, oh, "I had a blast. The food was great." Da da da. Oh, next time I'm gonna remember my rain fly. You know, they they learn and they bond and they have great experiences. And you know, twenty years down the line, when you say, "Tell me something about scouts," they're not gonna remember their citizenship merit badge. They're gonna talk about you know the the time that they were you know camping on the island and and all the adventures that they had. It's 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 important. Yeah, I would say some of the most memorable camping trips that I remember from Scouts. I'll never forget, we went to this fall jamboree. And I, I want to say that we talked about it when I did our episode with uh, with James, because uh, he was on this trip as well. We were in we were in a, a cow field. There was, no, if, there was no way to better that story. It was a cow field. And it had rained for a couple days before. It was raining during um, this trip. Uh, there was no firewood. Uh, there was no other shelter. It was literally a big cow field, and it was muddy, and it was nasty, and our tent flooded, and there was poop everywhere. And it, like, if I think of, like, the epitome of, like, uh, the trip from hell, it is that fall jamboree in Scouts for me. and. I, I I really don't even think maybe hammocks would have uh, made that camping experience a little bit better, uh, other than the fact I would not be on the ground and my gear would not be wet. Because because you're right, there is there is nothing worse than having either your head or your arm or your feet touch wet insulation. There is just something primally just disgusting when it comes to putting your head on just wet down where you think it's supposed to be soft and fluffy and it's just like soggy and just like this almost feels like a paste that just sticks to your skin and uh, uh, I can't do it. Can't do it. But uh, on the flip side, if you never have those experiences, then you think, oh, all camping trips are going to be like this. And when you do have that ex- first experience, um, you either learn from it or, you know, you just think, oh, well, this is this is horrible. And I think that's where a lot of, you know, scout leaders and, and parents as well, like not offering those opportunities for their their kids or their students to struggle. Um, you know, we, we have this be in the classroom. Some sort of constructive struggle is a good thing. If everything is always just handed to you, then you you never really have to work at anything. If you knew everything, then you 
why would we do things to learn? That's our, you know, our first trip together, you know, every, it, there, were, there was a lot of stuff that went wrong. You know, the, my shoulders were killing me. You know, I, I, I wonder why, I, I, yeah. I wonder why your shoulders uh, were killing you. And, and, you know, I remember, you know, worrying about what we we're going to eat and worrying about the people that we were going to meet and, you know, that, you know, hammock was not super comfortable and, but I still loved everything, you know, I loved everything, even though it wasn't easy and it wasn't not everything went to plan. It, it got me hooked. I was, I, cause I thought you were crazy. I thought you were crazy. Like we're going to go in the middle of nowhere with strangers and I'm going to sleep in a hammock. Uh, it, none of it made sense. And, um, you know, just that one experience, you know, if, if it was, I joke that, you know, like, why did, why did the first, first time have to be such an, you know, said, why couldn't we just be in the woods? I, I'm so glad it was a real adventure because it just made everything. Oh yeah. It, it was a trip that was completely um, just outside of my comfort zone in every which way possible. You know, for one, I, I was hiking and, you know, that was 400 pounds ago or, you know, two, 220 pounds ago. And so I wasn't, I was hiking and to hike multiple miles into a place that I had never been and on a trail that was not marked at all um, because I didn't want to take the three mile trail. I wanted to take the shortest trail. Uh, and, you know, luckily, uh, luckily, um, little Ricky, who, who I did not know personally at that point in time had made that video um, explaining, you know, how the trail works. And, you know, there's this little switch back here and there's a switch back here, you know, you just keep going straight. When you look at the map, it's like, oh, this is the easy trail to follow. But when you're actually hiking it, it's not a, it's not a very well maintained trail like the Florida trail. It's just kind of a, a, a makeshift fire road that, you know, people travel on um but yeah it was it, it was the hiking it was the backpacking that i had not done since early high school and what since i had done maybe it was maybe one maybe two trips because like i said my, my scout troop didn't backpack that we did a lot of car camping um you know my, my scout masters were relatively lazy middle-aged men but they provided those experiences just not backpacking experiences i don't so, know if you've ever if you've ever talked about the one of one of the one of the last times i was at hidden pond where another group from a church was there and the boy had to be medevaced out by a helicopter oh yeah i, th the, I think that was the one that we hiked in with with travis yeah, yeah. so there was a group that was there and um we we had literally just gotten there like we had just gotten to the pond and we heard this like helicopter uh come in and we're like what what's what going on uh now on, on the flip side it's not completely abnormal to hear aircraft out there um because there is the the military uh testing grounds or something along those lines out that way because you hear uh, when I was out there uh, a few weekends ago, I heard them, you know, testing ammunition and uh, different rounds. So you hear, uh, and, and it's definitely not like small arms because there is a rifle range out there too. But no, these these are very large caliber uh, rounds coming out of these. Um, and you hear aircraft coming through there fairly frequently too. But yeah, he had gotten uh, a bit by a pygmy rodler. And yeah, they had to um, medevac him out. So. They, they tried to get in with uh, four wheelers, right, and, on and, the hidden pond short and, trail, and they they couldn't. They had to turn around and abandon that to bring in the helicopter, because that's how that's how grown up and how hard it is to get in. These professional rescue people on you know four wheelers could not get through. Yeah. It, it is a very uh, overgrown trail. The If you're going to go out to Hidden Pond, I, I would I would definitely suggest from Pat's Island south. Um, it's it's like three, three and a half miles. Uh, you can also take the 
Juniper Springs North, which I think is about five, five and a half. Um, but I hear the hike is, you know, kind of monotonous, but eh, maybe at one point, maybe I'll try that. I know that's the route that my father-in-law um, usually takes when he hikes out there. Plus, you can park at uh, Juniper Springs if you wanted to pay for parking in like a real parking lot versus just kind of a trailhead. But, but yeah, I mean, the, the whole water situation, like the whole filtering water was something that I still very much hate. Um, but we didn't have to filter out too much water because you brought like three <laughs> gallons of water. So. <laughs> Which uh, I rag on you, but, but uh, in, a, in hindsight, I'm like, mm, you know, I'm kind of glad that he, if that was his cross to bear, yeah. that, that was, yeah. It's a, uh, we, we, uh, no one, no one was dehydrated that weekend. No one was dehydrated. And, you know, we, we discovered how re, uh, dehydrated meals work. We, we discovered that, hey, you need to stop by a chicken place on the way out and pick up a few packs of hot sauce because, I, I have still, I have not found a backpacking meal that I just think hot sauce would make this better. In, any of them, even like the ones that I'm just like, oh, this is really good. Hot sauce would make it better. <laughs> hot sauce makes everything better. Um, yeah. So that was, that was the, I had just gotten my uh, Warbon XLC. That was the first trip I was taking that. That was the first trip that I was taking my uh, jar bridge. Um, I, I want to say the hammock that I had let you use was um, uh, a Sierra Madre Paris mm. that I had gotten, but it didn't have a bug net. So we were using uh, an Eno bug net uh, with the, the, the Paris hammock, which is a little bit longer than Eno. So you, you had a lot of sag. I, re I remember thinking back on it, gosh, that looks really uncomfortable. Um, but we didn't die. We, we, we had fun and we, we met Oz and we met Juan in that trip and mm -hmm. we uh, met old dog and uh, we met another individual that I have not seen since that I thoroughly would love to go camping with again. And uh, uh, Waffle Box, if if you're listening to this, we, we still remember you and you're really awesome, very fluorescent uh, DIY gear. Um, but yeah, there, there's definitely been a, a few people that we have collectively met that we had a blast with that I, I wish we could do more camping with, but I've not never seen them again. Like Waffle Box, it's crazy fun to talk to, um, did a lot of DIY. And at the time I was just like, oh my gosh, this is, this is amazing. You made all of this gear. I want to learn from you. Um, especially now that I kind of do a little DIYing of my own. Um, but, but yeah. So, so who are some other people that you have met uh, along the way that you wish you could catch back up with again, that we have not seen waffle box just is the one that kind of pops in my head. I have another one too, that I, I have a feeling that you might say uh, round trip Raven. Oh we... yes. Yeah. I, have, um, I haven't seen him in a while. Yeah. So I, I, I do know uh, he's in California right now. Oh, okay. um, so, um, yeah, so him and Cajun know each other and, uh, yeah, he, he was one that, um, a, a friendship that we struck up because we happened to be in line behind at, uh, what I think at our very first hang con or no, it was at the raffle. We sat at the same table yes. at the raffle. Yeah. We used to just kind of suck people at tentacles tentacles that's that's the other one that i, I uh, that i was thinking forever. yeah yep that was the same year we met chino and and uh and and matt the Santa. other matt the other matt yeah other, i think um, we get i think we could say like drunk matt now drunk if matt. he doesn't listen to like we should know uh 
after we uh, kind of spilled the beans at the at HangCon this year. Like, hey, you have an unofficial trail day. We haven't told you in like, yeah, we've known you for like seven years, but we call you Drunk Matt. But now it's Homeless Santa, and that's kind of been the more adopted, unless we're talking in our circles. And it's like, oh, you're Drunk Matt. <laughs> but no, like Tentacles was a, a really awesome guy that uh, I wish I could do more hanging with. And, yeah. you know. I remember he, he, he how he got his... His name, he was. In, he said he was in the army and supply, and they called him tentacles because he could go out if you needed something, he could reach out and get it. Yeah, uh, I I remember him because he was the very first person that I um that I met that owned any uh, DD gear. So uh, DD is a uh, hammock hammock manufacturer in the the UK. Uh, so you don't see a lot of their stuff here, um, but. Uh, he he was the first one that I had met that had one of their tarps, and it was huge. Had like you know twenty three different tie outs, and <laughs> it was it was really cool. So, uh, well, we're we're gonna wrap it up for uh, this week, Matt. Uh, as normal, it, it's really great uh, to have you on, and hopefully, we can get together and uh, maybe we can make a video together. Absolutely, that would be wonderful. That would be wonderful. And, uh, you know, maybe even bring your kid along as well. Maybe. He, if he doesn't all, forget he's his always, name. He's always ready, to, raring to go. <laughs> all right, everybody. Before we go, don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed our episode today. And subscribe to our podcast for more episodes that will keep you hanging on the edge of your seat. Stay connected with us on social media to keep the hammock conversations going. Share your own hammock adventures and stay updated on all things hammock related. You can find us on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. Just search for the Hammock Hangers podcast. Thanks for tuning in, hangers. Until next time, may your hammocks be cozy, your views breathtaking, and your relaxation uninterrupted. Happy hanging, everybody.